friends, Steve Stockton here with you. Welcome to our latest video. This time, the strange disappearance of Dale Dinwiddie. Join us. I'd like to preface this episode by saying the case was suggested to us by my friend and fan of the channel, Samantha Phipps. Samantha writes, I'm an avid fan of your shows who never forgot Dale's disappearance and hope to see it solved for Dale's family. Even though I've lived away from the area since 1996, I'm a Columbia native and graduated from the University of South Carolina in 85 and was in grad school there around the time of Dale's disappearance. My college friends and I spent lots of time in Five Points then. It has haunted so many of my old friends and myself because we can all relate to Dale. It could have been any one of us, but here we are. We got to live our adult lives, and Dale did. A sad memory, indeed. On September 24th, 1992, 24-year-old Dale Dinwiddie was attending a U2 concert in the Five Points region of downtown Columbia, South Carolina, with some friends. As the concert wound down and people were leaving, Dinwiddie became separated from her friends that had left a few minutes prior to go to a bar. She went to the club, and one of the club's bouncers helped her look for her friends before she left the establishment and headed north on Harden Street. She hasn't been seen since, launching one of the longest searches and the oldest active missing person case in Columbia's history. Dale Dinwiddie was just 24 years old when she went missing. Having just graduated with her bachelor's degree in art history, Dinwiddie was making plans to attend the University of South Carolina to get her graduate degree. After returning from college, Dinwiddie moved in with her parents while waiting to attend USC. Friends were anxious to spend time with the social butterfly, and this was one of the first outings she had gone on since being home. Arriving at the williams Bryce Stadium, the group enjoyed the band and conversation and just being with one another. Dinwiddie was said to be in good spirits and had a great time. After the U2 concert was over, around 11.15, the group made their way to a bar called Jungle Gems. This is where things would go terribly wrong. Everyone made it to the bar and at first was having a great time. But as the night progressed, the group became separated from Dinwiddie. They had spent about 15 minutes looking for her, but decided that she must have gotten a ride from someone she met at the establishment or maybe even called her parents to come and pick her up. Neither of these were true though. When she arrived at the club, she asked a bouncer if he had seen her friends and upon learning he hadn't, she left that establishment and was on foot walking north through the Five Points area toward the intersection of Harden and Green Streets and was never seen again. The initial search for Dale Dinwiddie was extensive and police followed over a thousand leads. There was no crime scene and that makes investigations all the more difficult. Many suspects were questioned, including Ronaldo Javier Ray Rivera, who at the time of questioning was on death row for the multiple murders of four other women, one of whom was a police officer. Major leads were followed, but none of them led to any solid answers nor suspects. The longer the case lingered, the more rumors and theories arose from those following the case. One theory was one that we've all heard, that Dinwiddie ran off to start a new life. This theory is investigated often in a lot of missing person cases, and often leads to important details being overlooked early on in cases. Dale Dinwiddie was a very responsible 24-year-old that had major plans to attend graduate school. If her plan was indeed to run away and start anew, many family members and friends dismissed this idea because she would never make her loved ones worry. In the beginning, Dale's case was treated as a kidnapping. The authorities told the media at that time, there is nothing in her background to indicate that she would deliberately go away. Her family and friends agreed, even going as far as to state that she was a cautious person who did not like to be out alone. 
Suffering from severe asthma and needing an inhaler to control the symptoms, along with bi-weekly allergy injections, her medication was not taken with her the night she went out with her friends. This fact alone was enough to lead investigators to dismiss Dinwiddie having left by her own volition. The next and most probable theory is that Dinwiddie was kidnapped and murdered. The question is, though, by whom? Was it a stranger from the bar where she was inadvertently left behind by her friends? Or maybe a stranger that saw the young woman walking alone, a crime of opportunity? Or was it someone she knew? This last suggestion has been the most popular by the people that were closest to Dale. The two main sub-theories from this suggestion is that it was either someone she knew or someone that perhaps had been stalking for a long period of time, learning her habits and waiting to seize an opportunity where she would be alone. The area where Dale was visiting when she disappeared was very busy with party goers, students, bar patrons, and others all mingling before having to return to campus or home at night's end. This is one of many reasons a stranger abduction would have been hard for someone to pull off unnoticed. However, it's unknown how far Dinwiddie made it before she disappeared or even where she was going. There was only a general direction given by the last person that saw her, which was north, towards the intersection of Hardin and Green Streets. Having directly dismissed the idea that Dinwiddie would have willingly gotten into a stranger's car, no matter how desperate she was to get home, her family and friends cling to the idea that it was a person she knew as the most likely theory. This theory, however, comes with its own issues. If she accepted a ride from a friend or even an acquaintance, someone would have most likely recounted seeing her get into a car as the area was so busy. But with all the people questioned and that came forward with tips, no one saw anything. It has also been suggested that an acquaintance abduction would have been inconspicuous because there wouldn't have been a struggle or scene caused by Dinwiddie and her would-be abductor. An investigator close to the case stated, I'm leaning more towards a stranger abduction in Dale's case, regardless of how rare they are. I'm wondering how the perpetrator got her out of the busy area without being seen. The suspects in the disappearance of Dale Dinwiddie were all questioned, but the best suspect was the one previously mentioned, Ronaldo Javier Ray Rivera. Because he was a known serial killer, he had admitted to killing four women in Georgia and was living in the area at the time of Dinwiddie's disappearance. Rivera was a student at the University of South Carolina in 1992. These facts alone made Rivera a strong suspect, but there were no clues, no evidence, and obviously no confession. Rivera was sentenced to death for the killing of a police officer and three life sentences for the subsequent killings of three other women. Some have suggested that Rivera was merely an easy suspect as he was already in prison and was a known serial killer. Of the hundreds of tips that flowed into the police related to the Dinwiddie case, none have led to any useful clues to break this cold case. Investigators have even taken directives from a psychic that led them to a pond where a car was indeed pulled from its murky water, but it had no connection to the case. Other tips have seen deer bones excavated and search teams even used ground penetrating radar to look for abnormalities underground. Another call that reported a foul odor coming from a home near the area where Dinwiddie was last seen led to an entire floor of a home being torn out, but frustratingly, nothing was found. The case continued to grow cold. Then in 2019, approximately 27 years after the disappearance of Dale Dinwiddie, the disappearance and subsequent murder of another USC student would open back up those painful wounds and memories of Dinwiddie's case and bring it back into the spotlight. On March 29, 2019, 21-year-old Samantha Josephson was in the Five Points area in downtown Columbia, the same area Dale Dinwiddie went missing from, when she was last seen getting into a black Chevy Impala, thinking the car was her Uber ride. Josephson entered the car and never returned home that night. When she did arrive home by 2 a.m., her roommates knew something was wrong and filed a missing persons report the following day, Friday, March 30th. Later that same day, the county sheriff's deputies received a report of a woman's body found by turkey hunters in a remote forest outside of town. The body was identified as the missing USC student, Samantha Josephson. She had been stabbed over 120 times and left in the field where she was found. 
On Sunday, March 31st, her killer was caught and arrested. Nathaniel Rowland was charged with kidnapping and murder. He was subsequently convicted on both charges and sentenced to life in prison. This case was a painful reminder of the still unsolved case of Dale Dinwiddie to the many friends and family members that deserve answers. Then in September of 2020, another rumor about Dinwiddie's case made its way through the area of her disappearance like wildfire, that she had been found and the almost 30-year-old case would finally come to an end. There were whispers in the community that a man was questioned and arrested in connection with the case. Suddenly, dozens of calls flooded the state and local police agencies asking about the arrest. After examining the tips provided and calls made, however, these rumors were laid to rest, and Richland's police department released a statement saying that there is no new information on this missing person case. They also added, the investigation action will not change until she is found. Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott is close to the family and keeps them apprised of any new tips that come in. He says, I can see the pain in their eyes and hear it in their voices, but they are still focused and that has fueled us. The police department has tracked every lead, even traveling as far as Las Vegas and Minnesota to speak with people that claim to know something about the Dinwiddie disappearance. These tips were either criminals trying to cut a deal for themselves or people just lying for unknown reasons. Now I want to insert a disclaimer here. This section that I'm about to go into is in no way an accusation against South Carolina lawyer Harry Gregory. This video is intended to state the facts as we know them and as they've been reported by law enforcement, investigators, media, family, news outlets, and other online articles and videos. We are not responsible for the opinions of the reporting parties. Please do not harass anyone named in this video, not the victim, any of the accused, family or otherwise. And please be respectful of the comments section regarding the parties involved, especially the victims and their family members because they do occasionally watch the stories reported on this channel. In the fall of 2020, a case of forced intimate contact was reported to the South Carolina SLED, that's the State Law Enforcement Division, the female that reported the case told the detective when the assault happened that the man who assaulted her told her, you remind me of Dale Dinwiddie. Now this chilled the victim's blood. The man that allegedly made that remark, none other than Columbia, South Carolina lawyer that was just arrested in connection to a forced intimate contact with minors investigation, Harry Gregory. Now Gregory has since been charged with multiple counts of committing lewd acts on a minor in 2002 and again in 2004. This case has been turned over to Attorney General Alan Wilson. This tip was never referred to investigators of the Dinwiddie case because the investigators taking the victim's statement didn't believe this one piece of her statement to be credible, even though the rest of her statement was believed to be true. The news outlet that published this update was supposedly given the reasons why police reached this decision, but declined to share them along with the name of the victim as is customary. Several community members of Midlands area were asked what they thought caused the raid on the attorney's house on March 18, 2021, and unequivocally, it was said, the Dinwiddie case comment made by the new victim. Harry Gregory's home was served with a search warrant on the early morning hours of March 18, 2021. Police were reluctant to say exactly what they were looking for. Other females have accused Gregory from being demanding all the way to allegations of sadism. When asked if they thought he was capable of these actions against Dale Dinwiddie, a resounding yes was heard by those interviewed. Gregory was also accused of marital physical assault and has been divorced for years. The facts of this pertaining to this accusation regarding Dale Dinwiddie are as follows. Number one, Gregory was in the Columbia, South Carolina area at the time of the Dinwiddie disappearance. Number two, his residence is just a few blocks away from where Dinwiddie lived at the time. Number three, it's been stated by witnesses that Gregory was known to frequent the Five Points District looking for younger women. Just want to point out again here, there is nothing connecting South Carolina attorney Harry Gregory to the Dale Dinwiddie case other than the statement reported to law enforcement by the new victim as stated previously. However, 
Sources close to this case state that police do not typically raid homes of accused defendants over 20-year-old forced intimate contact cases. Therefore, people are speculating that the comment made by the victim about Dale Dinwiddie had something to do with the raid on Harry Gregory's home on March 18, 2021. There's currently a $20,000 reward offered for information leading to Dinwiddie's whereabouts. Dale Dinwiddie was five feet tall, had brown hair, brown eyes, and weighed 96 pounds. She was last seen wearing a green pullover shirt, a blue nylon L.L. Bean jacket tied around her waist, faded jeans, and tennis shoes. One finger on each of her hands has a noticeable curve. She was last seen leaving Jungle Jim's bar, which is now closed, in the Five Points area of downtown Columbia, South Carolina. Her mother, Jean Dinwiddie, has asked for people to rethink anything you saw that didn't seem that unusual at the time, but may now, looking back on it, be a little unusual. Would you please talk to your friends and friends of friends who were there on that night? Maybe someone who remembers something that could help us find Dale. If you have any information, no matter how insignificant it may seem, on either of these cases we mentioned here, please contact the Columbia Police Department at 803-545-3500 or Crime Stoppers at 888-274-6372 or you can contact your local law enforcement agency. There you have it, friends. I look forward to reading your comments about this strange disappearance. And let me remind you again, please keep it friendly and respectful. It's most likely the family will be listening to this. In the meanwhile, be good to yourselves and each other. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you just a little farther on down the trail. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time. Tell your animal Steve says hi.